Hey guys, welcome back to my handbook on the corporate exploitation of Appalachia. Also, we're going to talk about this film. So I live in eastern Kentucky, which is exactly like LA, apart from in every conceivable way. What we don't have in concert halls, big infrastructure projects, skyscrapers, that kind of thing, we make up for with coal mines, which I guess is whatever. A little inside baseball here, I actually bought this particular roll of film, the one that you're going to see the pictures from today, back in 2020, back in the good old days before everything went to crap. And if I'm being completely honest, I bought it the last time that I woke up in bed with a sudden urge to pee and also go buy film cameras. A condition that happens to me every couple of tax refunds. Give this video a like if that happens to you. So first, I guess we should talk about what this film actually is. Well, it's a color negative film developed by Lomography and their top secret Lomochrome Labs. I don't, I, I'm kidding, I don't, I don't know if they ha actually have labs, but it is one of three Lomochrome films that they have on hand. This particular film is known to desaturate colors pretty wildly and let you relive that emo phase from high school. It's a variable aperture film ranging from two to 400. The strength of the effect is supposed to vary based on how much exposure you give the film. It's exactly like the choose your own adventure. At the end, your photos will be contrived and disappointing. I've never shot this film before, so who knows how these shots will actually turn out. Well, that's not true. I guess I know. I mean, I did make the video, but for you guys, it's a mystery. Clumsily loaded the roll of film into my Nikon FM2, and soon I arrived at Disney World. I mean, this old coal mine. I began shooting some sexy B-roll and some crappy photos. I thought these ripples caused by the rain and this pile of coal dust were kind of interesting. I also exposed most of these shots at box speed, ISO 400, because I value predictability and don't like change. Dear footprints. My inner child thought that it would be a good idea to climb up on this coal mining apparatus, but before I did, I took this shot to document my questionable decision making. Not my finest hour here, personally or photographically. Ugh. Before my acrophobia kicked in and I got too afraid to climb higher, I took this shot looking out over the mountains. I thought it turned out pretty great, even with my subpar compositional eye. The mountains here are actually really, really pretty. I hopped back in my Ford F-150 and headed north towards Harlan, Kentucky, specifically the town of Loyal, or Loyal. Best I can tell here, pronunciation varies based on your proximity to a Starbucks. This place looks pretty sick from above. It's where Thomas and all his friends get together and throw parties. I tried to pass a field sobriety test on expert difficulty before I got started taking photos. I was interested to see how the film reacted to the rusty red colors of the trains and the yellow of the sign here in the foreground. I think it looked pretty cool. These shots from the rail yard are some of my favorite photos of the day. There were just some really cool photographic opportunities here. Continuing my tour to Kentucky, I arrived in the aspirationally named community of Colgood. This place is cool because they actually still have an active coal mine in the community. I say cool, assuming that you lock coal mines. Down the tracks from the church, there were the remnants of the Mary Colgood General Store. I really love this view. It's a really cool old building. And just behind there, there's the active coal mine where I actually witnessed the untold damage being done to the environment in real time. I thought about moseying inside and having to look around, but I would have been immediately shot on sight. They would have got one look at me and realized I'm not their kind. I really like this big metal bridge looking down the train tracks. I'm guessing that the pastor was getting pissed about his people not being able to show up to church, so he's like, build me this bridge, because he didn't want his churchgoers to backslide. And there's your rural word of the day. Just before I left for my next spot, I had this idea to try to shoot through the basketball net down the tracks at the old general store. Uh, it's probably a little cliche, but you guys know me, that's what I'm here for. After finishing up in Colgood, I made my way to Aegis, Kentucky to my next spot. It's hard to believe that back in Harlan County's heyday, it was actually one of the biggest counties in Kentucky by population. At this point, I'm probably halfway through my role in Metropolis. I think it's pretty natural when folks are shooting film, especially when you're just starting, to want to conserve shots. I mean, after all, you have a fixed amount of shots. But 
just to be frank with you guys, 36 well composed, decent images is a pretty good day of shooting. So at least it is for me. Just as soon as I took this photo, I started hearing things on the ridge above me, which is not a good sign when you're sneaking around in an abandoned coal mine all by yourself. It was at this point that I was certain that I was nearing the end of my time on this planet. I was going to be killed, dismembered, and then buried in an abandoned coal mine, never to leave Harlan alive. <laughs> Been saving that one the whole episode. Being the sexy, loquacious hillbilly that I am, I thought it would probably be better to tackle my problems head on and go talk to these gentlemen. So I approached and asked them what they were doing. And it be immediately became apparent they had big buckets, right? And they were picking up pieces of coal off the ground to heat their homes. I couldn't have been more wrong about their intentions. I do find it to be just a little bit ironic that these guys are walking around picking up coal shards from the ground. Um, and that's the only thing of value left in the community after the coal mines have pulled out. My last and final stop of the day was at the suspiciously named community of Lynch, Kentucky. As soon as you pull into the town, there's a big abandoned coal mine with a huge smokestack right in the center of town, and it sticks out like a pubic hair and a bowl of mashed potatoes. Not that I would know anything about that. I turned off the Miley, I mean Bruce Springsteen, and started exploring the abandoned mine. This is super chill. There aren't no trespassing signs or anything. You can just, I mean, walk off the sidewalk from this little community and go inside. So this place was surely a photographer's playground and gave me the ability to finish off most of the rest of this role. As I was walking back to my car though, I got this shot, which turned out to be one of my coolest shots of the day. It's of the abandoned mine opening. I want you to notice how little stands between you and just wandering inside the mine, potentially never to be heard from again. So it's the wild west over here. By the time I finished up in Lynch, I was almost through my roll, only had a few shots left and daylight was fading. What better way to finish off my trip through sunny California than at the highest point in the state, which is Black Mountain. Pristine and undeveloped except for the massive scarring from the coal mining operations over in Virginia. I fired off the last few shots on the roll up here and honestly they were a little disappointing. The views up here to be the highest point in the state aren't really all that great. So now that we've seen the images, what do we think about Lomochrome Metropolis? Well, I think the first thing that we need to talk about are the colors. The film has an overall pretty sepia-toned look, and I'm actually unboxing the film here for you to take a look. If you look at the back here, it's kind of, it's got this greenish tint. Perhaps that's got something to do with the way the colors render. After all, you look at my shots and they definitely all have that sepia, greenish, brown cast to them. Um, I think this film would probably be better served shooting in an environment where there are more colors. Um, I've seen shots on the internet, reds look great with this film, um, lots of blacks, dark colors uh, tend to make this stuff really, really pop. So I think maybe in the actual Metropolis environment, uh, maybe this film will shine a little more. All in all though, I've got a few more rolls here. I'm gonna keep shooting the film. It's really cool. I think that there's some really great photos to be had with this stuff and I'm gonna keep playing around with it. But something else to note, they're actually developing a new formula. What I'm shooting, you can see it on the box here. It's the 2019 variety of the film. We have a new 2021, 2022 variety coming at the end of the month. This, this month being December. This month being December 21. So look for that on the shelves in the next little bit. Should be a lot of fun to experiment with as well. But if you've stuck with me this long, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all around.